is the transmission on your 2014 to 2018 Chevy Silverado or GMC Sierra running too warm for your liking? Well then stay tuned because I've got a fix for you. We're going to drop this transmission from running 190 plus all the way down to the 130, 150 range. And the best part is we're going to do it for free. All you guys need is your pickup and some hand tools. So here not too long ago, just a couple months ago, GM finally somewhat admitted that these transmissions on these trucks run too hot. They have basically, it's a thermostat is really basically what it is on the transmission that's set to not open till 190. Now the idea behind this, I guess, was maybe so it would get better fuel mileage, but in reality, if you look at history, transmissions running warm is not a good thing. So there's several different ways that you can fix this. This just being one right here. You gotta decide if it's right for you. I've heard a lot of people say, if you live in a cold climate, think really, really north, Alaska, New York, somewhere up in there, this may not be for you because your transmission may not warm up quite enough to run efficiently. If you're down south, it's a no brainer. Florida, one of those areas, stay warm, it's all right. Me, I'm kind of in the middle, Northwest Arkansas. So it really doesn't get awful cold here. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, flip the thermostat in this thing and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. So it's a little bit of a different method just depending on the year model that you have. But if you come right past the driver front wheel here and you look down under, you're going to see, oh, there we go. You're gonna see right up in here if I crawl down in here, you're going to see this guy right back here. So this, what I'm pointing to here, it's kind of hard to see. This right here is where that thermostat's located. So you're going to have one or two of these. On the older model, you've got a 13 millimeter nut right here. And you've got some quick connect lines for your transmission lines. On older models, you have the 13 millimeter nut, but you also have a um, 10 millimeter nut right here to pull those transmission lines off. So if you got the newer model, it's easier. You just take the two nuts out, pull these off, and then the thermostat housing will come out. However, lucky for me, I've got the uh, little quick disconnect models. So what I got to do is just fish in a little pick or a little um, screwdriver or something like that and basically push the little clips. Now, hold on to those clips, but you're just gonna push those out. And be warned, you're gonna lose just a little bit of transmission fluid, so you may wanna catch it or just make sure you don't get it on you too much. So that was probably a little tough to see, but now that I've got them off, you can see how these work. So you wanna pry right in here or over here, just pry them out, because all these are just, they're, they're springy. You can see, see how I flex them there? They're held in place like that, so if you can pry them out, it opens it up so just don't lose those watch those you might do this in your shop or something instead of on the ground like i am but just use a little flathead screwdriver or a um pick or something and then you just got to watch out because whenever you pull these lines out you're going to lose a little bit of fluid and out comes the top see how it's broke loose there and now we just got to simply unbolt the bolt. Sorry I'm doing it from this angle, guys. I don't want to get my phone all covered in transmission fluid. I'm just going to unbolt that bolt and take that down. And out the bolt comes. It's a fairly long bolt. I'm just going to throw it right there with my other stuff. Then I'm going to see if this thing will come off of here without much of a fight. All right, took just a little bit of effort to get it out of there, but it just slid right out. You can see where the two cooler lines were. So now I can just wash this thing up a little, especially where this gasket mates. Go ahead and do a little maintenance, clean it up if you will. You can see it's leaking out some fluid more still. But what we're gonna be looking at here is the top right here. You can see there's a little snap ring in there. So what I'm gonna do is take that snap ring out. So I've got some snap ring pliers and then I've also got my needle nose right here. So to make this just a little bit easier, I want to spray just a little bit of WD-40 up here. Just makes these snap rings go in and out a little bit easier. Hopefully this is the right size bit in here. Yep. We'll set this down in here. Take out the snap ring. Set it off to the side. Now this 
maybe a little stuck in there. If it is, all you've got to do is take your needle nose, pull on the crescent shape there, just kind of wiggle it a little bit. This thing will come out eventually. There we go, finally came out. So, this right here, let's take the whole thing and set it off to the side. And then, in here, we'll dump this out. And this right here is what you hear people call the pill. So, take this out as well. Then the last thing you're gonna have down in there is a spring. So you take that spring out. Boom, just like that. Now all we're gonna do is we're gonna take this guy, we're gonna reverse how it was installed basically. We're gonna take this, drop it the opposite way that it came out, down in there just like that, the big side up, put the spring in, then put this guy back down in there, just like so. You may have to push this down in, and it may take a little uh, persuasion. And once it's down in there, we're just gonna take our snap ring and put it back in place. That was a little bit easier on the concrete ground, but you can see my snap ring's not quite all the way in. Guys, definitely make sure that thing is all the way down in there. So it's gonna make it click. Make sure it's spread like it's supposed to. Might even push down a little. Guys, I think that's in there pretty good. So now we can literally just take this guy and reinstall it. And so back under the truck we are. Just gonna check that little gasket there, which looks good to me. And now I'm gonna take my piece and reinstall it, making sure to line up the holes there. Put that in. Take that really long bolt. Set it in the hole right up there. Then tighten this down. I'm not gonna get it super tight. I'm sure there's, I think it's 15 foot pound if I remember right. But just don't get it too tight because this bolt's probably steel and what we're threading into is most likely aluminum. And with the bolt in there and tightened down, now we can take the lines and just feed them back into their proper spots. Bottom one first, probably be easier. And make sure they get snug in there. Boy, and don't do like me. Make sure those lines are all the way in there. You're almost gonna feel a little click as soon as they line up before you put those little quick connect rings back on. Cause if you don't, your line's not fully connected, you're gonna leak fluid. So now I'm just gonna clean things up a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll come out here in a few days and I'll check to make sure that we're not leaking any fluid anywhere. Something kind of like that. All right, and just like that, we're all done. Like I say, go back there in a couple days or maybe even after your first trip and make sure that it's not leaking or anything like that. Pay attention next time you're driving to, to monitor and make sure that the transmission's not running too high, it's not running extremely cold and you're all done. But you definitely wanna put that stuff back in there because if you don't, you won't get any flow to the cooler. If you take all that crap out of there, and put nothing back, you will cook that transmission. So make sure you are putting things back in in the proper order that I just showed you right there. You've been warned. But now you know how to make your transmission run much cooler on your pickup. And for my favorite price, free. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, definitely leave a thumbs up. Guys, use the comments down below as an open discussion board. I know everybody kind of has a different opinion on this, whether it's good, whether it's bad. Um, I'm just a, I just like tinkering with my own stuff on the weekends. So I did this because I kind of fall into to the line of what history has taught us. Heat is not good for transmissions. So like I say, guys, use the comments down below as kind of an open forum to discuss your thoughts on this and whether it's worthwhile or not. And also stay tuned. I'll be showing you some other stuff that you can actually do. You can buy kits for these that actually change things out. Um, or you can buy the OEM replacement part and I'll show you how to make it fit. All right, guys, until next time, take care.